how you use the playlist in FL Studio is gonna have a really big impact on whether your beats sound amateur or whether they sound professional. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys the tools that you need to know if you wanna become a better beat maker when you're using the FL Studio playlist. Starting off, let's take a look at some of the basic tools up here and some of the unique ways that you can use them. We'll start off by clicking and dragging some of the patterns that we have here into our playlist to make a quick little arrangement. By the way, if you want to drag multiple patterns into the playlist at once, hold down control and click whatever patterns that you want, and then just simply drag them in, and there you go. Or if you highlight the pencil tool up here, this will let you quickly draw in whichever pattern or clip that you have selected. Holding down shift enables paint mode. This lets you draw in multiple patterns as long as you have shift held down as well as the left mouse button. Obviously, we can right click our mouse to delete patterns. When you're drawing in a pattern, holding down alt will let you draw it in without snapping to grid. You guys can see I can drag it freely here. This also works for dragging your patterns around as well as truncating, you guys can see. Right now it's snapping to grid when I move it around. Same thing with the truncating. But as soon as I hold down alt, I can go in smoothly within the grids. Same thing with dragging. Holding down control will let you select multiple items within this box here. Holding down control and shift lets you select multiple patterns manually. From here, if you hold down shift while you drag around your pattern, you can create a duplication. Or alternatively, if you have your patterns highlighted, just hit control and B. That will also create a duplication. Looking at some of the other functions up here in the toolbar, slip and slice editing, you guys can see up here, the arrows and the little knife here. These are really good to use in conjunction. They can really help you add a layer of detail into your beat. For example here, let's start off by using slip editing. You can use this to shift around the notes in your pattern to create new timing. You guys can see I'm dragging in the notes that are actually existing in the pattern. And if you want to play with the timing at a very micro level, what you can do is go into your pattern, hold down shift and use the scroll button on your mouse. You guys can see I can nudge the notes around now. By the way, this nudging feature also works on the pattern itself. If I hover the mouse on this top bar here, hold down shift, I can also nudge the entire pattern this way. And this is why slip and slice are so useful if you use them in the right way. For example, if I wanted to take this 808 pattern and create a short little switch up here, I could go in and create an entirely new pattern, or I could use the slip function and use some of the notes that already exist in this pattern and just shift them around. Alternatively, if I want to do a similar type of technique here, I'll just drag everything back. If I use the slice feature instead, I can slice the part of the pattern that I like and put that in the exact place that I want it. By default, when you use slice, this will let you slice on an angle you guys can see here. But if you hold down shift, this will automatically lock it into a vertical position. Holding down alt and shift at the same time lets you do this exact same thing, but without locking onto the grid. So now at this point, I could just delete this first section here, drag this part over, slice the remainder here. I'll drag the pattern back, and then I will expand this pattern to be a little bit more full. And there you go, I have a quick little switch up here. By the way, using the insert key on your keyboard will automatically create a slice wherever your cursor is. I should say though, this is gonna make a permanent alteration to your pattern in the playlist here. You guys can see if I were to take this exact same pattern, which is 8081, and I drag it back into the playlist. Now it's gonna be this truncated version that I created up here. Same thing occurs if you start shrinking your pattern. If I shrunk this down, and then I drag 8081 back in. Now it's this tiny version of the original. So if you wanna use this technique, it might be a good idea to make the patterns unique before you start doing all of this. You can do this by going into the clip menu right up here. And if you select make unique, this is gonna create a duplicate pattern here that you can just start playing around with at this point. Just so we still have a copy of the original pattern, just in case. By the way, while we're in this menu, another useful feature here is select source pattern. This will let you quickly swap out other patterns that you've created. So in this example, I've created a bunch of different 808 patterns and I can just easily test out different ideas and experiment a lot easier this way. Also double clicking this bar up here. This will let you quickly jump into the piano roll of this selected pattern. So this is useful if I wanted to create a short little switch up in the beat, I can use the make unique function to create a new pattern and go in and easily play around with it. Next up on this toolbar up here, another useful feature is playback. 
This will let you quickly hear what's happening at one particular pattern or clip at one particular time. So I can jump in at this part of the sample loop here. Or over here. Or I can try out the hi-hat pattern. Or if I hold down shift, this will play it all the way from the beginning of the actual pattern or clip that we have. Instead of having to select this every single time you want to do this, what you could do alternatively is hold down Alt and right click on a pattern. This lets you activate playback on the go. And again, this is useful if I hear something that I don't like, just quickly double click on the pattern. And you can just quickly change up whatever you don't like. Back up to the toolbar, this area right here. This is a drop down for all of your different audio clips, your automations, as well as your patterns. So you can quickly just select one and drop it in. Or if you right click on this menu, this will show you everything in your playlist at once. And you can just hover over each and every single one to hear how it sounds. And then you can click on a pattern and just select it like that. We also have this other important section right here for your arrangements. This lets you do a few useful things here. This can easily let you test out different arrangements or ideas for your beat. You guys can see I already had one pre-made here. So if I select this one, this full beat that I already made is showing now. If I like this arrangement that I came up with, but I sort of want to play with other ideas without having to permanently change what I've already made. What I can do is select this drop down menu. I can select clone and this created an entirely different arrangement so I can play around with this now. So this is really useful if you want to experiment with different types of ideas for your arrangement. I can also start an entirely fresh idea by clicking add one. This will give me a blank slate to play with. And you can also merge multiple ideas, which is also useful as well. When it comes to listing the different sections of your beat, you can just easily use your cursor and jump around in the time bar up here. You can also right click in this area and drag your mouse to loop a certain section that you want to hear over and over again. <laughs> if i want to focus in on a specific pattern when i'm doing this i can just right click this green dot here this will solo the actual track that i'm working on you can also unmute by left clicking this as well by the way, while we're in this area, what you can do is change the size of your track by just dragging this around. Or you can go in the top right corner right up here, left click and hold this down to change all the sizes at once. As well, I might as well show you guys some other useful tips for this area right here. If I right click, we have the typical things like changing the color, changing the icon, renaming the track. A useful feature that I like to use is merge pattern clips. So let's say I was in the beginning phase of making my beat here. I have a one bar loop going. And if I wanted to quickly turn this into a four bar loop, instead of going to each and every single instrument, copying and pasting these over multiple times, what I could do instead is something different. What I could do instead is take this pattern, drag it into my playlist. I could paste four of these patterns back to back here, right click the menu, click merge pattern clips. And now what I did is combined all four of those patterns and made it into one big pattern. This feature is automatically gonna create an entirely new pattern with all the merged tracks into one. By the way, alternatively, what I could have done is just highlighted the clips, hit control and G. That does the exact same thing. We also have the ability to consolidate our tracks into audio clips. So if I right click on track three here and I click consolidate this track. Now you guys can see I have a new track here, track four. And this is the hi-hat pattern in audio form now. As well, another useful feature in this menu here is lock to content. You guys can see in this track now we have this little chain link. What this will do is take the first pattern in that track or the most prevalent clip in that track and it'll make it the default of that entire track going forward. This is just for a little bit of efficiency. Let's say for example, I'm arranging my beat. I've selected this pattern over here, perk one, and I'm drawing it in. And so I want to extend the 808 pattern in this area. Instead of having to go all the way over here, select 808 one and then draw it in. What this does is it automatically defaults 808 one into this pattern no matter what is selected. So as you guys can see, perk one is selected. But if I draw perk one into this track, 808 one gets drawn in. So again, just a little efficiency here. If you have a pattern that has multiple instruments playing at once and you sort of want to easily split them out into their own individual patterns, what you can do is select the pattern from this area over here, right click it, click split by channel. You guys can see now I have this exact same pattern, but I have it split out by its individual instruments. Also, while we're here in this menu, you can do a similar type of thing where we render this pattern into an audio clip. But there's this additional feature here, render and replace, which is really helpful. Let's say I'm focusing in on this noise track right here. <laughs> What I can do is select the noise pattern on the left side here 
And if I use this option, render and replace, you guys can see what happens. Now every single pattern of noise 2 that existed in my beat now gets turned into audio and it automatically replaces it. This is really useful to free up some CPU, for example. Let's say this took up a lot of effects to create this type of noise. What this does is it bakes all those effects into the audio clip, so now I can easily go into the mixer and just remove all those effects and free up some CPU. Or what I could do is just treat this like a sample and start chopping up and rearranging it without having to deal with MIDI, which is nice. A cool little feature that you can use in this particular situation, by the way, if I go into the clip menu once again, I can select chop. This gives me a bunch of different options that I can take this pattern and chop it down into. At this point, I can just rearrange this pattern if I wanted to. So a few miscellaneous features here that I'm going to quickly show you guys. For me, what I like to do is test out a bunch of different samples and ideas in my beat, but not all of them work out by the end. And what ends up happening is I'll have a bunch of samples in this area here that I'm just not even using in my beat. It just sort of clutters everything up and gets in the way. So if you're OCD about this type of thing, what you can do is right click in this section right up here. You can hit select unused. What this is going to do is select all the different audio clips that don't even show up in your beat. And at this point, you can just right click hit delete. Now we just have less clutter in our beat, which is nice. Speaking of this little area up here, you guys will notice we have this section right over here. As I scroll through the different icons, different options seem to pop up. A really important feature is stretch when you're under the audio clip section. So what this will do is let's say, for example, I'm playing around with an audio clip. Instead of truncating the clip, if I have this deselected like this, if I go in and select stretch, this will start to stretch the sample out. Another useful feature in this section, if we go to the automation clip section and we select step. Now when we go into our automation clip, you guys can see I can draw in a pattern really easily here. Otherwise, if I didn't have this selected, so let me just drag points around. I did a video on how to use automation clips in order to improve your beats, so check that out. That's a really useful feature in order to get your beats to sound a lot more professional. And so to me, these are the most important features in the FL Studio playlist. Using these features will really help you add a layer of detail into your beat to help it sound a lot more interesting and a lot more professional. If you guys have found this video helpful, please do like, subscribe. As always, leave a comment down below if I missed a feature that you like to use in the FL Studio playlist that I didn't cover. As always, my free jump kit is available in the description box below, and I will see you guys next Tuesday.